Good day, everyone. So today's lesson is about um, well, we're still busy with soils, different type of so uh, types of soils. Uh, we looked at color, porosity, texture, air, water, temperature, and morphology last term, and now we can look at the classification and colloids, uh, the pH, acidity, alkalinity, and organic matter inside soils. So in your textbooks, we are looking at pages 84 to 113. Okay, so first of all, let's start with soil classification. What is the classification of soil? Firstly, it's the grouping of soils together based on morphology. Um, that is uh, to say their structure or anything to do with their structure or form. And also their physical, chemical and mineral characteristics, how much how many minerals are in the, in the soil, what types of minerals are in the soil, and also physically what do they look like, uh, the texture, uh, color, those types of things. So we need to classify different soils based on these facts. Okay, then secondly, we have two um, groups. Uh, firstly, soil forms. This is a general classification of soil, uh, specifically the particular combination of different horizons and conditions. Okay, so whether it's horizon A, B, and C together, or it was A, E, and C instead of a B, all these have to do with the different forms. Then the subcategory of soil forms, the general um, classification, we get soil families. Okay, so here we look at more specific things about the soils um, based on certain characteristics, and these can be based on the texture, color, um, the pH of the soil, how clay is it, is it, or is it more sandy? So it's much more in detail than they were based on families. Then why is it so important um, to classify soil? So for the farmer, it's important for optimal use of land. So if the farmer knows um, what type of soil is best to keep us felt, and what soil he can use for crops, that's good for him to know so that he gets the best out of certain sections of, of his land. Then secondly, homogeneous production units. This means which um, areas of soil are all the same. Um, let's say um, a drier area would have a different type of soil and also different types of horizons than at a different, let's say, 10 kilometers away uh, where there is a dam and much water inside the soil. So the soil will be much more clayey. So it's not the same. Those two would be heterogeneous, not homogeneous. So homogeneous is areas where the soil is the same. Okay, then thirdly, for the choice of crop, okay, which soils um, is present on the farm, which would be better for maize production, which for wheat, maybe for soy. So it's good to know the different characteristics of the soil so you know which crop to grow. And fourthly, we need to plan farming activities. The farmer has to do that. So uh, which areas are a bit more drier, which soil um, areas are a bit more drier, does he need to water the uh, crops more often, he has to irrigate more often, and then um, if he also needs to figure out which for camps, which areas can he use or keep as felt uh, for his animals to, um, to eat there, or what um, does he need to um, keep for crops. Okay, then also for land allocation, this is more to do with uh, city planner or a land planner who has to know okay which areas can the country allocate for farms and which areas do we um, want to save for maybe game reserves and which areas can we actually build cities on so if we know usually cities are built on um, infertile soil soil that is not good for crop farming and so on so that's important to know then lastly, for the valuation of soil, certain soils like those that can be used to grow crops on be more valuable than those um, that we would rather want to um, a, a reserve for uh, building buildings on. Or yeah, so um, because that's the worth would be less because we can't really utilize it, we can't really use it. Yes, fine, it gives us space to build buildings. Um, but we can't year after year grow crops, which would bring us more, um, give us a higher income. Okay, so it's especially important for if a farmer wants to um, make a loan from the bank. So the bank would most probably give the loan to the farmer if the land was more valuable for him to grow crops. 
Okay, then still with soil classification, um, how actually does this procedure of classification work? First of all, we dig a hole in the soil, uh, which we call a soil profile. After the hole has been dug, maybe uh, three meters deep, we demarcate or um, we mark the master horizons. But when we look at the color, like things, um, at things like color and texture, so the, the topsoil we would um, automatically know would be maybe a lower horizon because we see it differs from the second layer based on the color and the texture. This area differs from this um, section uh, because it's a lighter color and the texture may differ. This um, area would be a second horizon or third horizon, sorry, based on its color and also texture and you go so on. Okay, you understand that. Thirdly, based on these areas we allocated, now we have to name the horizons. Um, which one's E, B, and so on. So the first one would be O horizon, in this case A horizon, then an E because it's light colored and full of minerals, and then a B horizon and so on. Then fourthly, we need to establish the soil form based on the combination of the horizons. So your O, A, E, and B would give you a certain soil type, but if it was maybe O, A, uh, B, C, and maybe R, it would be a different type of soil form because it does not have the same horizons as this example. Okay, so that's based on the combination of horizons you have. Then fifthly, we have to identify certain characteristics. Once we know what soil form it is, we need to look deeper into it to, say, to see maybe how much clay is inside the soil or how grainy it is, um, sandy it is, and also how many cations are in the soil. Cations, is your um, positively charged um, atoms. Okay, so it's it's also these minerals, uh, other positively or negatively charged minerals that's in the soil. Okay, so how much and what the different types are in the soil. And six, um, six um, also based on these characteristics, we need to determine now the soil family. So this is now the subgroup of the sub, um, soil form. More in detail, based on these characteristics, what is the family now? Okay, for this year, you guys don't have to know uh, in detail all the different soil types, but just an example of your uh, soil uh, form uh, could be Arcadia soil form, uh, also Glencoe, Shortland, and Willowbrook. Um, it's in your textbooks. So then, an example of soil family uh, could be Allen Ridge, Duesa, Constantia. Okay, the thing about the soil family is it's usually named after the area where it's found. Say, um, here in the Eastern Cape, south of the Drakensberg, we find a certain soil family, but maybe on top of the Drakensberg, even though we have the same, the same combination of horizons, it may not be the same soil family, it could be other soil family, because maybe the clay amount differs and there are different types of cations in the soil. Okay, so based usually on where the geographic location is of the horizons, the soil family can differ. Okay, then we get to soil colloids. Now, what is a soil colloid? I know it's a very <laughs> huge word, but it just refers to the smallest particles of soil. So a colloid is still a, a piece of soil, just the smallest parts. So we get two types, organic and inorganic. Your organic would be things like humus, uh, um, from feces and so on, those types of particles that become soil. And your inorganic is usually clay particles, primarily uh, clay particles. Okay, so um, what happens, um, like I mentioned with the cations, cations are atoms that have lost electrons and then they become positive. They're your cations. But you also get um, atoms that have gained an electron. It's gotten one. Um, it, yeah, it's gotten one. So it, um, we call it the anion. So it's more negative now. Okay. So what usually happens? These um, particles, the soil particles, they are usually negatively charged. For an example, would be this soil type. You see all these minuses. It means the soil is negatively charged. Okay. So. The rest of the, the, the ions or um, mineral uh, compounds or elements that it attracts is uh, positively charged. So, and uh, cations, I beg your pardon. 
like in case, uh, for example, of this soil type, it is positively and negatively charged. So it attracts your positive and negatively charged ions, your cations in your, and your anions. Okay, but primarily you're going to focus on the cations, like in this uh, example. Okay, so uh, your cations can also be either um, gained or lost, sorry, maybe one electron, that'll be one plus, or it may have lost two electrons, like this calcium. So it's two plus or plus two. Okay. So a second uh, characteristic of soil colloids would be um, specific cation determines um, the, the pH of the soil. Okay, the, the amount of certain cations determines the pH. Okay, in this case, this the pH is 3.5, so it is very acidic. If it is very acidic, that means um, that there are a lot more, okay, this example is a bit bad, but there's a lot more of these hydrogen atoms um, in the soil. Okay, so um, hydrogen atoms um, are being adsorbed um, or attracted by the soil. Okay, that makes it um, very acidic. Then this is a, oh, I did a, oh well, let's look at this side rather. pH 7, that would be uh, neutral, yes. So if there's a lot of uh, calcium and magnesium, calcium and magnesium cations in the soil, then this soil would be neutral. Okay. Unfortunately, I couldn't, couldn't get a very um, alkalinic example, but if it's very alkalinic, then there's a lot of potassium and sodium. Um, I can't see one here. Lots of potassium and sodium would be in A in the soil. Okay, so just know that the, the, the type and the amount of certain cations changes the pH of the soil. Okay, then still on soil colloids. We have something called cation adsorption. Okay, not absorption. Absorption is when water and minerals go into the plant. The plant absorbs it, it goes into. Adsorption just means that the minerals stay on the outside, usually of soil particles. Okay, these are examples of soil particles. And these um, green, red, and blue circles are your um, cations. And they, I want to kind of say bind um, in between brackets, bind to the outside of the particle. They're just attracted to these clay um, or um, humus particles. Okay, so that's called adsorption. They are attracted to the outside and they stick there. They, they, they're highly attracted because the particles are negatively charged. These are positively um, charged in this example. And they, like a magnet, attract um very strongly to one another. It's very hard to separate them. Okay, just one thing to remember about um, these um, cations. Usually when we have something called cation exchange, um, that is when these particular um, cations can be taken away and another one uh, goes in, in its place. When this happens, there's a certain type of order how these things are attracted. Okay, it's called the Lyotrope series. Um, and usually what it means is that aluminium with three plus um, is much, is, is firstly attracted. It is more strongly attracted than some of the others. So if there is to be happen an exchange, um, say this was a hydrogen atom um, and there was an aluminium one free, floating here free in the soil um, water or in the soil spaces in between um, particles, the, the clay particles, they would gladly throw away its hydrogen atom for an aluminium one because it's much more, um, attract, more you know, attractive. Okay, so aluminium would be first, it is much more attracted, then hydrogen, even though it's H plus, it's because it only has one atom and is very strongly charged. Then it would be calcium, magnesium, potassium, and then sodium. Okay, so moving on to cation exchange in more detail, basically what happens, yes, you have your soil particle, here are all the cations that's ab adsorbed by the soil particle. So when water and carbon dioxide, just for an example, um, when they react in, this, in the soil 
in between the soil spaces, um, it becomes a carbonic acid. Um, yeah, just making sure I'm correct. It becomes carbonic acid, and this dissociates or breaks up into smaller parts. Um, one of the hydrogen atoms um, goes its own way, so it's now only H instead of H2, still CO3 minus because it lost, no, it gained, <laughs> sorry, it gained um, an electron because this hydrogen is positively charged. So one of the electrons went over to this side and this hydrogen atom lost an electron. Anyway, so it's, it's um, separated now. Because this hydrogen is now loose, I want to say, in the soil um, space, it is easily attracted to the soil particle because, as I mentioned in the lyotrope series, um, it's first aluminium, it wants this guy and exchange anything else for it, then hydrogen, calcium, magnesium. Okay, so here it has calcium, um, at, um, yeah, two calcium atoms. You, um, this soil particle will gladly get rid of these two if it can get a hydrogen atom, because as I mentioned, hydrogen more strongly attracted than calcium. Okay, and with the um, nearby plant, they, it also exchanged, um, there was a hydrogen adsorbed to the surface of the root hair, but it also gave away this cal um, hydrogen atom. So two replaces the two calcium um, atoms, and now the calcium in the water it's now free, it's in the water, and it can be absorbed by the root, by the plant. Okay, so the plant also wants to gain those um, minerals and also absorb it. Okay, so that's basically your cation exchange. Okay, I think this will be in the next video.